Today we're going to start talking about how to actually put together a geometric proof. When you're completing the proof, there are a lot of different reasons you can give for each step. Now I'm going to give you some of the things that generically we could put there. So you could list any theorem. It's messing up. Give me just a second. I took my tablet home last night and it's not liking it. There we go. You could list any theorem as a reason. You could list any postulate as a reason. You could list any axiom as a reason. An axiom is like a little spin-off of a theorem. You could list any definition as a reason. Any property as a reason. Basically anything that you know for sure is a what? Fact. And I do want to give you some more specific examples. So if you would, when you've written those six things in, just flip it over to the back and there's some room to write there towards the bottom. If you see something like this, AB bisects CD. The minute you see this word, you should know what comes next. If AB bisects CD, what do you know is true? I know that there's two congruent parts. So I know that CX is congruent to XD. And I know that by the definition of bisect. Okay. If I see A is a midpoint of BD, What should I be able to state next? What does it mean to be a midpoint? It cuts something into two equal parts, right? So I should know that segment BA is congruent to segment AD. And the reason I'd know that, definition of Midpoint. If I just see a picture and it looks like this, what should I be able to state next? Angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. The reason? Vertical angles are congruent.
if I saw something like this. Angle 1, or actually the measure of angle 1, equals what? 90 degrees. Linear pairs are? Supplementary. Everybody get the general idea of what I'm talking about? Everything that I've put up here is some kind of definition or something that we know to be as a fact. And I can tell you that a lot of times in geometry this happens where you see a triangle and they put something down like this. And we've talked about it a lot lately that we should mark that piece as being congruent to itself. But I would need to make that statement. I'd need to state that segment BD from triangle ABD is congruent to segment BD, which is out of triangle BDC. Why do I know that those two are congruent? What property is that? It is reflexive. To do a proof, you're just taking your ability to recognize certain terms, certain things in a picture, and come up with the next logical step that would be in a proof. So are we ready? Because this is really the first time you're going to have to piece together a proof basically from beginning to end. Doing one algebraically is one thing. Doing one in geometry, it looks a little different. What should I always list as my first statement? the given information. So I want to state that segment BD and segment AE bisect each other. And the reason I can state that it is given. The minute I see this word, I already know what I'm going to put over here on this side. What do you think is going to go on the reason side? The minute I see this word, what do you think I'm going to put over here? Definition of what? Definition of bisect. To know that something bisect it isn't going to help me prove it. They haven't stated things that are congruent yet. But in order to state that these two triangles are congruent, I've got to know either side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle. So I need those pieces. If BD bisected AE, then I know that segment AP is congruent to segment PE. And since they bisected each other, I also know that BP is congruent to PD. That pretty much used up the concept of what was in the given information. Sometimes the rest of the information comes from the picture. What's not marked in the picture that we could mark, and why can I mark it? 
Okay, so which two angles are congruent? Angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. And the reason I can mark it is vertical angles are congruent. Please do yourself a favor. Once you know something is congruent, mark it in the picture. Remember, the goal is to show that the two triangles are what? Congruent. If I'm trying to show that the two triangles are congruent, I'm looking for one of four things right now. I'm looking for side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, or angle, angle, side. So I want to make sure that I'm marking this picture so that when I see one of these things occur, that I can go ahead and state that the two triangles are congruent. Can I state they're congruent yet? Yes. yes. What's the reason? Side, side. side, angle, side. And I don't even have to think about the order here. They've actually given it to me. They said A, B, P would be congruent to E, D, P. And I know that those two triangles are congruent by side, angle, side. questions on this first proof. Next example then. What's the first thing I'm going to state? The given. Angle 2 and angle 5 are right angles. I'm also going to state that what? FH bisects angle E F G. And that was all given to me. Remember, in order to prove triangles are congruent, I have to know that the sides or the angles are congruent. Because again, I'm using one of the four methods that we've talked about recently. Two and five are right angles. Did that state that angle two is congruent to angle five? Did it? Did it state that they're congruent? Not really. This may seem like a, a little step, but angle two is congruent to angle five. Does anybody know why? We did talk about it. It was a little axiom that we talked about. Hmm? What can you tell me about right angles? All right angles are what? All right angles are specifically what? Congruent. That's why I can make that statement. The other piece of information that was in the given used this word, bisects. What got bisected this time? What got bisected? An angle. Well, they're talking about this angle, E, F, G. So they're talking about this whole angle. And if it got bisected, obviously I'm going to use that definition again. The definition of bisect. But what two parts did that make congruent? Angle 1 
is congruent to angle three. angle three by the definition of bisect. And I'm going to mark that angle one is congruent to angle three. By the way, you should be able to see that we now have an angle and an angle. And in this one, I have an angle and I have an angle. I've kind of exhausted the given information. And sometimes the rest of it comes from the picture. What's in the picture that we haven't stated yet? What did you say? FH is congruent to FH. And what property allows me to state that? Reflexive. Yes. Okay. It is a required part of the proof because in order to show that these are congruent, I have to have either three sides, two sides and an included angle, two angles and an included side, or two angles and a non-included side. Does everybody see I have one set of angles here? I have another set of angles here, and now I have a what? I have a side. If I look at them, they go angle, angle, side. I can prove that the two triangles are congruent now. So I can prove that triangle FGH was in fact congruent to triangle FEH by angle angle side. What we've done today is we've taken what you've been doing in little bitty pieces one step at a time and we're putting it all into one thing. If there was an impression that I could make on anybody, this is would would it be? Please never, 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 never leave a proof completely blank. Example three. Obviously, first statement, HF bisects EG, HF is perpendicular to EG. Given. What word did you notice right away in the given information? What's my reason going to be? It's going to be definition of bisect. Since HF bisected EG, what two pieces are going to be congruent over in my picture? HF bisects EG. HF bisects this segment. E.G. E.F. is going to be congruent to what? F.G. That's by the definition of bisect. E.F. is congruent to F.G.
They gave me another piece of information here. What did they tell me about the two segments? That they're perpendicular. What does that tell me about angle two and angle three? That they're congruent. Perpendicular lines form four congruent angles. Why did I list four instead of two? Does anybody know? Mm -hmm. The ones on the other side because it says perpendicular lines. So if that was extended, there'd be a total of four of them. Okay? But that's why I know angle two is congruent to angle three. And I'm going to mark them as being congruent in my picture. Well, that exhausted the information from the given. The rest of the information probably comes from the picture. What do we see? I see HF again. It's shared. HF is congruent to HF. And the reason? Reflexive. My last is going to be triangle EFH is congruent to triangle GFH and the reason side angle side. Questions? Last example. At least I think it is. Obviously, the first statement is going to be the given information again. QR is parallel to PT and QP is parallel to RT. And I'm actually going to mark that by putting the parallel marks in my figure. Knowing that these lines are parallel like this should tell me something. When we talked about parallel lines, we talked about four different angle types, didn't we? So, since we talked about four different angle types, it should tell me that that's probably what I'm looking for. I'm looking for alternate interior, alternate exterior, corresponding, something along those lines. And I obviously want to state things are congruent, otherwise it's not going to help me prove triangles are congruent. So if I look at angle 3 and angle 5, they're alternate interior because they're on the inside of QP and RT and they're on opposite sides of the transversal. My reason is going to be alternate interior angles are congruent and I can state that angle 3 is congruent then to angle 5. 
there is another angle that I can state as congruent. Which ones? Angle 4 and angle 2. A different set of parallel lines, those are between QR and PT, but the same transversal. I can still see they're on the inside, opposite sides of the transversal. So I can put it right in the same statement. And I want to make sure that I've marked my picture. What else is missing? I see I have two angles. PR, the side, PR, is congruent to PR. That's the reflexive property. Again, once I know it's congruent, I should mark it congruent to itself. Can I prove the triangles are congruent yet? It would be ASA, angle, side, angle. So I could state that triangle PQR is congruent to triangle RTP. Questions?